This is rental car number 125, and today I'm driving the 2019 Toyota Corolla LE. This is a compact car that seats five-ish, probably more like four and a half. And it's actually the 12th generation of the Corolla, which just blows my mind. I had no idea they started making this car, or at least a version of this car, way back in 1966. That is crazy. Anyway, my long-winded point being that uh, this car has been around for a while. Also, I need to make a quick disclaimer. I actually uh, drive a Toyota on a daily basis, and I generally like their cars. So keep that in mind, because my opinions might be slightly skewed, but uh, I will try and remain objective. And while I'm on all these tangents, uh, let's talk quickly about trim levels. This is the LE. That is one step up from the base model, which is the L. And this one retails for about $19,000, which isn't too bad for a car like this. All right, so let's pop up with the hood and take a look underneath. The LE Corolla has a 1.8 liter four-cylinder engine. This is a CVT, a continuously variable transmission, and it has shift mode capability. Shift mode capability just means if you want to, you can pop that gear shift over to the left and push it up and down to shift the gears somewhat manually. Uh, this thing kicks out 132 horsepower at 6,000 RPMs, and because you don't get a tremendous amount of power, you do get some really good gas mileage. 28 miles per gallon in the city, 36 on the highway with a combined rating of 32, although if you drive like me, you can probably up those specs quite a bit. Uh, fuel tank capacity is 13.2 gallons. It takes regular unleaded gas, and uh, that costs by me right now about $2.96. So that means you can fill this thing up for about $39. All right, so let's stop talking about specs and start talking about what it's actually like to drive the Corolla. I want to start out with handling. Uh, it's pretty great. It's easy to drive, feels smooth around the corners, and it's a breeze to park, although that's probably due to how small this car is. Uh, my overall point here being, though, that uh, I like how the Corolla handles. But remember, I do drive a Toyota on a day-to-day -day basis, so I'm used to this type of handling, and it just kind of feels, well, it feels right to me. But what you should know is you don't have any issues going around curves at high speeds. Well, highway speeds, not really high speeds. And uh, overall, it's just pretty easy to drive. Acceleration is where I'm going to be a bit more critical, because this car is a little bit slow. Uh, I don't have any accurate 0-60 to 60 times, but it's not going to be great. And I was actually pretty disappointed by the lack of speed because I loved driving the 2019 Camry, and I was kind of expecting the same level of fun. But, uh, well, don't get me wrong. I mean, the Corolla performs well. There's nothing wrong with it. It just wasn't as peppy as I was expecting. But it did work great for the casual highway and suburban driving that I needed it for as a rental. You know, cabin noise was also pretty good. When you're at this price point, around that $19,000 mark, usually, at least for me when I'm driving these cars, I do have to bump up the volume quite a bit once I get past 45 miles an hour. But that wasn't really true with the Corolla. I did have to increase the volume a little bit, but that's because I uh, was listening to audiobooks and I really wanted to hear each and every word. But overall, cabin noise is pretty good on this car. So here's the key. It's actually a physical key, which is, uh, well, it's refreshing because I've been getting a lot of key fobs lately. Pretty nice setup, just four buttons on the key itself. Lock, unlock, a trunk release, and then a panic button. On the back, you get Toyota's logo. Let me uh, switch hands real quick so I can start the car up. Fairly simple steering wheel setup. Kind of a circular control right here. The arrows adjust the track or the mode that you have on the center display. And then the top and bottom buttons adjust the volume. Down below we have a mode button to uh, cycle through Bluetooth, radio, CD player, that kind of stuff right here. Over on the right hand side we have phone controls to answer and hang up a phone call. You can access the voice assistant technology by pressing this button right here. And then you can shift the display of uh, the screen up in the gauge cluster by pressing this button right here. We also have lane departure assistant right here. So this, when it's activated, will buzz at you if you veer out of your lane. And then we have adaptive cruise control right here. So this will match the speed of the car in front of you uh, while you're in cruise. 
The cruise controls are not on the steering wheel itself. It's actually an individual stock right here. Just push it in to turn it on, and then you can cancel by pulling down. Actually set by pulling down, cancel by pulling in, and then resume by pushing up. I have this on my actual uh, car. I drive a Prius, and uh, after a while, this works really well. It's pretty intuitive. Up top, we have a nice gauge cluster. It's got some blue accents on both dials. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have RPMs and a temperature gauge. On the right-hand side, we have a speedometer with your fuel gauge, and then a small screen in the middle. Uh, I have it on the cruising range screen right now, so it shows me that I can drive this car another 266 miles until the gas tank is empty. It also shows you at the bottom that I'm in park and that the odometer, uh, this car has about 20,000 miles on it, which is pretty good for a 2019. And then it also shows you the outside temperature. It's, uh, Getting warmer today, 50 is not bad. I'm gonna hit the display button a couple of times so we can cycle through some of these screens. Average speed, ooh, zero. I haven't been going anywhere right now. Elapsed time, I've had the car on for two minutes. We have a vehicle setting screen that we can hold down that control to access, and we can turn on and off some of the safety technology in the vehicle. And then it also shows me my average miles per gallon and then this screen is what you'll see if you do activate that lane departure assistant technology down here. Over to the left of the steering wheel, we have, you know, pretty basic controls over here. Window controls and your door lock is tucked kind of behind this handle right here. Up above there, we get a silver door latch along with a black lock. Up on the dash, we have our mirror controls right here. Just hit the uh, button right here to adjust the left mirror, right mirror, and then a control below that. And then you also have an additional control right here to adjust the brightness of the screens in the gauge cluster. You also get this nice vent right here. It's kind of got a cool shape. Just twist it to open and close the vent. And then up on the side, we have our side view mirrors. No blind side detection on this vehicle. Although uh, it's a pretty small car, so you don't need it. And you'll see you have the exact same mirror on the passenger side. Up top, we have some fairly basic controls, just two lights, and then a simple switch to uh, adjust whether or not the lights are gonna turn on when you open a car door, and then your standard rear view mirror. No controls of any kind on here, no garage door buttons or anything like that. Uh, just a simple toggle switch that's tucked away on the back of the mirror to adjust it. Down below there, we have clock. Big fan of this because it's already got buttons built into it to adjust the time. You just have to push a button to adjust what time it is. Uh, two vents next to that. Down below there we have our center display. Hazard buttons on the left hand side, a CD player on top, and then some fairly standard controls. Now these are not physical buttons, but they're just sort of built into the glass, so they're always here in this setting. So you have an audio screen where you can choose whether or not you wanna play audio over your Bluetooth connection on auxiliary jack, a USB jack, CD, AM and FM radio. We also have a setup screen that's fairly easy to interact with. It's got a Bluetooth uh, menu button, which I love because it means that you can connect a Bluetooth uh, device like your cell phone within a matter of seconds. It's just really easy to get access to. And then you also have a car screen, which shows you some basic information about the car, like your average speed, how long the engine has been on, and the range you have until empty. And then you have a track uh, button right here, so you can adjust what track you're playing. And then a phone button right here that shows you your call history and some other information if you're gonna load that kind of information onto the vehicle itself. And then, it's hard to see, but these are two black knobs that kind of blend in with the screen itself, one for volume and one for uh, tuning the radio. Below there, we have our climate controls. Again, we have kind of a black, sleek look, which is nice. Simple controls to adjust the temperature, along with a Similar control to adjust the uh, fan, the direction, the vents are blowing, and then just simple buttons to turn on and off everything else. This is great, and I want to note that when you are adjusting things, you do get a pop-up screen on the display itself to show you what temperature you're setting the vehicle at and how intense that fan is blowing. Down below there, let me move the gear shift out of the way, we have a power port. And then a USB port and an auxiliary jack right here. This little cover is made out of a, kind of a rubbery plastic material. 
but it does feel pretty solid. I'm always worried that things like this are just gonna tear off with a simple tug, but this feels like it's made out of decent materials. And then down below there, just a small storage cutout. This is where I've been keeping my cell phone and it seems to work pretty well. The gear shift itself, it's kind of got a uh, rubbery material on it. Feels good in your hand. Shift those gears pretty simply and easily. Um, when you do put the car into reverse, you'll notice that you do get a rear view camera. I got the sun right behind me, so that's why it's kind of looking washed out. But it's a nice wide view, and the screen resolution is uh, pretty crisp, so you should be able to see what's going on behind the vehicle fairly easily. And then, you also have a sport mode, so you can shift the gear shift over to the left once you put it in drive, and then uh, take advantage of some additional power on the vehicle. And behind there we have our parking brake controls to turn on and off traction control, and then two cup holders. I'm drinking uh, Super Tea today for no reason other than it was on sale. Cup holders are nice because this little plastic piece right here just comes right out. It's always nice when these things are removable because you can wash them really easily and keep the car clean. And you'll notice there's already a little bit of gunk building up on that. And if I'm being completely honest, I have no idea what you would use this little slot for at all. Behind there we get our center armrest. This is kind of a synthetic feeling material. It's pretty soft though. And then this has two controls on it. Let me show you real quick what I mean. There are actually two buttons on here. So if you press the one to the left, you're gonna reveal a small shelf. This is actually really shallow. And it's fairly small too. I mean, I don't even think my cell phone would fit in there. But you get a small shelf. And then when you hit the other control, over to the right, that shelf gets sucked into the roof of the center armrest, and then you reveal the storage cutout underneath. It's kind of dark in there, so let me shine a light down there. Get a small sort of felt-like material at the bottom. No power ports or anything down here, but it's a nice size storage space, so I guess that's a good thing. And then over on the passenger side, we have a glove box. Pretty large area. What do we got today? We got a owner's manual, someone left us a mechanical pencil, and we also got, is that paint on here? It's a little bit weird. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't use my glove box that much. What I tend to carry around is just a first aid kit and my manual in here. So let's see if those two will fit in the glove box. Yeah, it looks like this will close pretty easily. That's all I keep except for maybe a couple pieces of paper for my registration material. So this one, works pretty well. All right, before we jump in the back seat, I just think it's worth mentioning that look how scratched up this already is. So this is the area directly on the side of the steering wheel, and this is where you're gonna put your key in to turn the car on. And I mean, I miss occasionally, probably not this much, but every once in a while when you're in a rush, you're gonna gouge this area, but just look at all the scuffs already on this vehicle. That is, uh, that's not a good thing in my book. I jumped in the back seat and with small cars like this, I like to push that driver's seat back all the way just to see what kind of leg room we're dealing with. And if you'll see, I still have a good five inches of leg room between my knees and the back of that seat, so that's pretty fantastic. Those seats do not have any pockets, at least on the driver's seat, but on the passenger seat, you do get a small pocket. Again, this is kind of a synthetic feeling material. Um, not a huge pocket back here, but enough to get a couple of items back there. And looks like someone left me a purple bluish straw. That's nice, glad I touched that. Uh, on the back of the center armrest for the front seat passengers, no power ports down here. But you do get a small cutout right here that looks like it used to be an ashtray. So I uh, kind of wish Toyota would do something better than just that, but it is there. On the door itself, you just get your window controls, door latch, door lock, and up above, you get a small handle to uh, hang your jacket. There is a center arm, center arm rest back here. It's got a nice little tab on there so you can fold it down fairly easily with two cup holders. And then let's look at car seat anchors. It looks like they're fairly shallow. I don't know if you can see, but you can already see the anchor itself without manipulating the seat. So that means it should be fairly easy to connect a car seat back here if you need to. 
All right, so let's close things out by popping open the trunk and taking a look underneath. Uh, kind of a big space for a compact car, but I tend to like rectangular trunk areas because it's just so much easier to use when you have bigger items. And this one, the wheel wells do infringe on the space a little bit. Thankfully, you can lift the floor up, and there is a temporary spare tire under here, which is great. I would note, though, that the floor is made out of a really thin material, so when I had all my gear in the trunk, I could actually see it bowing a little bit and bending quite a bit, which isn't a good sign for long-term use. Anyway, it's a big enough space, though, that you can, uh, well, you can haul quite a bit of stuff back here. Another small criticism, though, is although those rear seats do fold down, the pins that you have to pull up on are actually on the other side of the headrest that they typically are. So you do have to kind of reach all the way into the vehicle to pull them and fold those seats down, and it's kind of a pain. Although once you do get the pin pulled, the seats fall down without any issues at all. And then, as you can kind of notice, that cutout between the trunk space and the cabin of the vehicle is about 40% of the size. So it's not tremendously big, but it's big enough if you need to get a longer item, like maybe an Ikea bed or something back here uh, to haul it home. And if I'm being completely honest, I mean, what more do you expect from a compact car like this? This is a decent sized trunk and, uh, well, if you wanted something bigger, you can always upgrade to a larger car. Anyway, that's everything end to end on the 2019 Toyota Corolla. I know that I was kind of critical at points of the Corolla in parts of this video, uh, but that's just me trying to give you an objective view of this car. This is still a solid compact car with great gas mileage, and it's got a really reasonable price. So I'm going to give this one four stars. Look, this is a great car. I just can't give it five stars because it lacks a little bit of fun, acceleration, and the interior is somewhat dated. But anyway, that's just me. If you disagree, please leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you join me next time when I rent and review the 2019 Hyundai Accent. I'll see you then.